after this week, hopefully this week, um, Miss Edwina is going to have the YouTube channel that I'm recording the classes on, and then you'll be able to watch them, um, you know, after today. Okay. Okay. So what we're going to do to start out is everybody made these collages last week, right? So here I'm going to pin myself. Um, so that I'm the biggest. Okay, so I made this one. You guys remember I made this one and we practiced cutting random pieces of paper and Corey made, Corey made this one, right? So what I wanna do today is I wanna put paint over top of these collages. But before we do that, we're gonna do another little um, art exercise, which is called asemic writing. Has anybody heard of asemic writing before? No. Okay, so a semic writing is an art writing. So I did this one, this, I do this all the time. This is a big, I'm talking big, like capital B-I-G part of my artwork. And this is one, and then this is one. So the difference between these, these are all on the newsprint pad, right? And I did this one. So I wanted to focus on the asemic writing because basically the definition of asemic writing is like doodling or illegible writing. So it's writing that to the artist has a voice and a meaning and purpose, but to the viewer, it is not a deliverable content. Does that make sense? So a lot of times artists might even make up their own symbols for mm -hmm. words or feelings so that they can put a lot of content into the art without everybody knowing or their true self, right? So they can, they can pour their emotions into the art without maybe everybody being able to read it like a dictionary, right? Because sometimes people get sensitive about disclosing a lot of personal information. Okay, so one of the things that I did, and this is actually, look, I think looks really beautiful, but basically, does anybody know what this says? It says family. Yeah, good job, Edwina. Yeah. It says uh, family. It says, actually, this says pets, right? Okay. And this I, says, does anyone know what this says? Turn it around. Can't see. Uh, love. Yeah, so this says family, pets, and love. So our exercise today is I want everybody to just kind of practice and learn a semic rating and maybe try it out. My style of drawing is super, I call myself loopy and I like to joke with myself because I'm kind of a loopy personality and part of my, you know, my personality is a little bit loopy. So by loopy means I have a lot of like curves in my handwriting, right? So technically, like right now, I'm just doodling, right? But to me, like my doodles and my writing are very similar. So what I wanted everyone to think about is the question of home. And my answer to what home means to me was very simple, the people in my house. And of course, I included, included my animals as people, because as far as I'm concerned, my animals are members of my family and they're like legit parts of my household right so what i wrote here was family pets love and then i wrote down all of my name all the names of the people and animals in my house okay so that could be a very simple place to start like what does home represent to you who is in your house what are the names of the people that come and go from your home and that you would include as part of your family, right? So here's another one that I did. And it says the same thing. This one doesn't have names on it though. This one has things about my house that I love. So I wrote love, I wrote nourishment. I wrote my bed, my comfy bed, my good food, right? My nutrition, I wrote um, love happens at my house. And I wrote comfy, I wrote sleepy, sleep, bed, comfy food, good food, right? So these are all things that I think of when I think of my house. And that yet, even though these words are fairly simple, I think that the artistic quality of the asemic writing is very beautiful, okay? How, how do you spell this? Is How did you spell asemic? Asemic, I put it in the chat. It's A-S-E-M. 
M I C. And I can do a quick screen share to show everybody. So there is an entire like um, art movement in art uh, based on aesthetic writing or what's called mark making. Uh -huh. And they kind of go together, but here is an example of what that looks like. So basically it's ill, un, like unreadable, right? Text or font. So if you happen to write the words closer together or like this is a good example, right? It's a beautiful sort of mark making technique and it could have a ton of meaning to you, but then you're not really telling the world the, you know, the full truth. You're giving them sort of a glimpse of something very personal. I use it for my paintings. And a lot of times I'll go into my studio, I'll be in a really bad mood or I'll be super upset or even upset by the news or the politics. And I can literally write it all out how I really feel without ever anybody knowing. It's kind of like my secret little language and it can be very beautiful. So. I'm going to go back to my screen and um, here I'll go back to my regular screen and I'm going to do it again so you can see me I'm going to write, um, you know what what home means to me and again I'm using and I didn't buy everybody markers, but I'm using a paint marker. So if you guys I want you to do this, so if you have any type of markers or okay. sharpies. Uh, Crayola markers, Sharpies. You can try the um, Asemic writing in any, and I want you to do it too, Naraya. You can try it with any, I want you to come sit and do this. You can just put that down, you can do it later. Right or you can try any pen and also think about your color palette. I like Asemic writing in black, but you could do it in light gray. You can, do you want to get a paint marker? So you can get a paint marker or a crayon. You could use a crayon, a pencil. I did it in a couple different things. Here I did it with an oil pastel, right? And I basically just was scribbling. I wrote, I started lists of all my pets and my children, right? So that's what I think of when I think of home is I think of all the people that use my house and come and go. So who else could you put on your list? You could put friends, you could put other family members. You could literally just say like, mother, daughter, son, aunt, uncle, you know, grandparent, you know, grandmother, grandfather, you can use any language. But the idea is to sort of transcend the literacy of the word and get to sort of an artistic place. So um, like, let's say I did, all right, can you grab me another? Oh, let's say, let's say I did grandmother, right? So the idea is to just kind of let your hand get really loose. That says grandmother, this says grandfather, you know, kind of go, go make it purposely illegible. This says son, daughter, right? This says husband, right? Husband, wife, right? Children, right? Grandchildren, right? And you can also, there's so many ways to make this interesting, right? You could go over and over the same space. You can repeat the words, right? You can use a lot of different language. If you like, if you only had sons, you could do son, son, son. Maybe you had five sons. You could do son, 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 right? And then the idea is that it turns out in a beautiful scribble, that we're gonna actually use as one of our collage elements, okay? So, and if your hand, whatever your handwriting is, you know, if you were a doctor, you know, maybe you never had good handwriting. As far as I'm concerned, their writing is a stomach all the time, <laughs> right? <laughs> but if you're an artist, right, you can, and then look, look what happens is that this gives you, whatever these words are, they give you all of these interesting shapes that you could continue to draw into or make more um, into art than words, right? You can change colors. You Do you have to stay with you the can same do color? this. Yes, you can do this writing exercise in any tool. I want you to do it too, Naraya, come here. So Naraya is gonna do it. Let's see what hers is gonna look like. And then I want everyone to show. So you're gonna write what, uh, maybe get a pen that you like. 
I have paper. I don't want you to use this newsprint. I want everyone to do this on the newsprint pad that I gave you too. Come sit here. So it's my favorite type of paper. So I want you to write illegibly, right? In a very sloppy font that's yours. Illegibly meaning so you can't read it. And I want you to write like um, what home represents to you. So what do you think about when you think about home? Right, so what do you think about when you think about home? Maybe you think about cleaning. Maybe you think about chores. Maybe you think about bills. You know, maybe you think about financial responsibility. You know, these are all things that you could be thinking about when you're thinking about home, okay? So whatever it is, let it out. It's just a stream of consciousness and you're just expressing yourself. Just make well, one you page. want to make it so if you can still if you can if you're doing it and you can still read it you've got to loosen your hand up maybe go larger and you can do other things to it like maybe go over over and over it so layer it right we're talking a lot about layers so we're talking a lot about layers and if you can still read it keep going right push it to the point that you can no longer read it right and what is that going to take is it more more writing so i feel like this one this one i could kind of read it but then i went over it again and now i can't read it because the names that i wrote and the list of the people that lived in my house i wrote over top of them right okay and also maybe you're just afraid to let go and you're just not quite loose enough I write with my right hand and I want to get looser and left-handed. Yeah, maybe try writing with your other hand, right? And just so it's just, and it's much more about gesture than about um, being specific, right? I want you to try to let go, try to be loose, right? So I already did, I already did like six pages, right? I did one, right? I did two, I did three. Now you can kind of see four, uh, and I did five. Naraya's working on one in gold, which looks nice. And then maybe, yeah, I love it. And then maybe try some, that looks beautiful. Now, what are your work? Here's Naraya's, let's try another one. Oh, Naraya did it in gold, which is really beautiful, right? She did it in gold. And so this, whatever color you did yours with, this is a great collage material, right? And I want to see these pieces um, in your future collages or in another layer on the collage we already did. You just picked these new towers kind of stuff. What did you actually write here? Your family's name. All right, so these are all the family names of Naraya's family, but they're top secret because she wrote them in a Semic language, so we can't read them, right? Okay. So does anybody have one that they'd like to share? And how do you guys feel about this? Do you feel like you're like kind of, it's like being accountable, but also being mysterious. I always like that. Oh, that's beautiful. Wait, let me pin you, Sue Ann. That's beautiful. Hold on. Oh, beautiful. Okay, so what does yours say? My pet, my animals, all my animals. Your animals. Those are your, all your animals' names? Yeah, yeah. Okay, perfect, beautiful. And what are your animals' names? Ruby Rose, Sugar Bear, Smokey, Buffalo, White Boy, um, and um, I think that's it. Oh, are they all cats? No, one's a rat. <laughs> one's a rat. <laughs> Which one's the rat? rat. White, white, is White Boy the rat? White Boy's the rat. White Boy's the rat, that's great. White boy, the rat. And now you should write a children's story called White Boy, the Rat. <laughs> oh my God, I love it. Does anybody else want to share? Diane, do you want to share? Or Edwina? Let me see. I'm going to pin somebody else. Hold on, I'm going to look at yours. Oh, beautiful. What does yours say? I have my uh, Bill, Michelle, my, my son, uh -huh. Charlie. I have my uh, Wolfie, which was my uh, uh, husky that I had, a dog. I have food, I have food, love, yeah, music. Oh, good music. I forgot about music. That's right. I, we have a lot of music in our house too. Lots of music and uh, music. home and home and warmth. 
Warm. Yep. I definitely had to put my bed. I have like a serious, like, I like love my bed. <laughs> I put, and I love the food I eat in my house too. My husband, I love the food we make there too. Does anybody else want to share? Edwina? Uh, All right, hang on. I'm going to put Edwina's on there. I can't tell what it is though. <laughs> That's great. I love that. That makes it even better. It's top secret. It's um, top secret. It's like you're writing, writing the code to save the universe or something. Cool. I have home. My name. Uh huh. That's home. Awesome. I have um old. I have pet. Yeah. Poodle. Poodle. Put a put a. Yeah. That's the name of uh cat nickname. Um pet. Yeah. I love and it. I'm working on another one. That looks awesome. So I love it. I love your style. I love that. And so to me, because I'm such an artist, all I see is like, like style. Like I definitely see a loopy sort of flowy style. Like even with Naraya's, like I see hers is much more like tight and sort of, here, I'm going to show you hers again. Like hers is like sort of, it's like angled and it's tight and it's like a, more like a static line, right? So she wouldn't, I wouldn't call her style loopy. I would call hers more um, um, vertical, like almost like it reminds me of, um, and uh, what's a, a card, a, what's a card when they do your heart? An ecogram, right? Like right. Type of, yeah. Right. So but these, these types of lines and forms, we, we have so many mental associations to them in, from our life experience, right? From like going to the doctor or from like going to the museum and seeing like ancient Roman writing or Egyptian hieroglyphs, right? We've, we've had this sort of like universal knowledge about language. So it's more important to us that we recognize that it's saying something I think that it is that we know what it says. Does that make sense? So it's sort of like, it's like a release to not feel burdened by knowing specifically what it says. You just know that the artist is trying to express something that's important to them, right? So, and I love that relationship about being able to be mysterious. Does anybody else want to share their um, ascetic writings? Wait, Miss, uh, wait, I'm going to go down the line. I think that's, Oh, there you go. Is that Lynette? Hi, Lynette. How are you doing, sweetie? All right, go ahead, put it up there. Let me see. Beautiful. Oh, I see granddaughter, right? Day. Oh, that's beautiful. I love your handwriting too. Those are gorgeous. And you did that in blue. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, good job. I love it. Beautiful. All right. And last but not least, I think we have Miss Betty down here. Is that everybody? You want to share yours, Miss Betty? How are you? Did you do one? <laughs> not sure. Okay. All right. I'm not sure Miss Betty did one. All right. So what we're going to do now, I hope that that was fun for everybody. What we're going to do now is we're going to actually go back to our, um, we're going to do one more thing today and we're going to use our briar. So that was a little exercise. Now these papers, right? I want you to make sure that you save them. And I hope that everybody did them on their newsprint pad that I gave you, right? I wanted everybody to use this XL newsprint pad that I sent you in your box. One of the reasons is because newsprint paper is my favorite collage paper because of the lightness of the paper. It's easy to glue and it's super fun to paint, right? It's also very inexpensive. So sometimes having an inexpensive art supply just allows you a ton of freedom to just go in and rip off like 10 ascetic writing. Like say you had a really bad day or a fight with your husband or a fight with your brother, you could just rip out a pad and write all about it, right? So that it's unreadable, right? Which makes it, I think, super fun to kind of deliver these secret messages. Okay. So let's put these away or to the side for a second. Uh, wait, I'm gonna show, Naraya's having a ton of fun over here. She's really getting into it. So layering and going over and get, and like literally writing in the same spot is also a super, super technique. Good job, love it. Okay, keep going with that if you want. 
but you can also help me, Naraya. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna use the briar and we're actually gonna do something kind of maybe un, un normal or something that you I'm wouldn't think for a walk. But we're gonna use paint and the briar and we're actually gonna oh, roll, we're gonna roll some paint over these collages. So I wanna introduce this tool, this is the briar. Everybody's got their briar out and I'm gonna write this in the uh, messages. This is the briar. I love the briar. Um, it's a super way to go over a collage with paint because it's a roller, right? So what happens with the roller is it's not as affected or it's more affected, I don't know, by the collage. So pick a color from your color box of paint. I picked a light color right? Because I like to paint from light to dark. It's a very important part of my process. So I don't um, like to put the dark colors on in the first couple layers. Um, but if you do, that's fine. It's fine with me. I'm not going to be upset or anything. I'm just saying I like to go from light to dark. Okay. okay. So one of the things too that I use a lot in my studio is I use plates. Um, these plates can be, these are styrofoam plates. You can use plates. You could use trays. We use a lot of stuff like this in school. We recycle, we recycle like meat packs, right? Like here's a styrofoam, right? So this is something I could put paint in it. And honestly, a lot of times at the end of my day, I'm so tired. Um, from teaching all day that I don't even clean them, right? I don't even wash them. I just let the paint dry in them and then I put more paint on top. It doesn't really bother me. Sometimes I might feel inclined to wash them all, but most of the time I just use the styrofoam and then I um, just let the paint dry and reuse them. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of paint. If you want to do a gradient or mix the paint, you can add two colors together. So here I have like a really nice, like pale pink. And I might put another, I gave you guys a ton of pinks. Like all of these colors, I think look really good together. I might do like a beige. You, I'm gonna do yellow. You make, I'm gonna yeah. try yellow. I like yellow. Do you? Do you yellow do you for the sun. Yes. Yeah. Do you mix it together or you make different spots? I just put different spots on the same plate. And then what's okay, going to happen is they're going to mix together. So what I right. think is super fun. Naraya, do you want to pick a color? Naraya is going to pick a color too. Paints are in the bucket. Paints are All in the bucket. right. Yep. Naraya is going to pick a color too. So we're going to go ahead. And, and the brayer is super cool. So what happens, sometimes I like just the randomness of, of art making just to sort of happen. So I did beige and yellow, right? With a little bit of peach. And I'm gonna end up kind of blending all three colors together. I'm gonna put it on the briar and I don't really know what's gonna happen, but I'm just gonna go ahead and roll it right on my collage, right? What's also kind of nice about the briar is that it goes on thick like the first roll and then the second and third roll get a lot lighter, right? So. Here it is on my collage, okay? I think it's a wonderful way to sort of start to neutralize the background and make it like one color because this is gonna be a background layer, right? Also, if I'm starting to think about this as maybe, um, I don't know if it's gonna be a landscape and there's gonna actually end up being a house on here or some type of a figure, I can sort of start to separate the light or bottom and the top. But I loved how I did the yellow and then I sort of added the pink. And I think that it just made the collage so much better. And that's all we're gonna do to this today. We're not gonna do anything else to it, to the collage. We're gonna actually set this aside and we're gonna go ahead to the next collage, which is right here. And we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing with the prayer. Um, so again, I'm mixing the colors on the plate with the brayer and I'm gonna roll it over the collage, okay? 
Mariah's being my assistant here and she's so into the writing. She hasn't stopped writing. <laughs> so again, you don't have to put paint, okay, you don't have to put paint everywhere on the canvas. You can paint however you sort of want, right? At the top of the bottom, right? You can add it in stripes. It's just so much fun. I think the prayer on the collage and I really love I love this one with the color and the back, the black actually, I think really looks nice with the color. Okay, so those are my two collages that I have. And now I roll them with the brayer. So I still have paint, right, in my plate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and go, and you can do this too, Naraya. I'm gonna go ahead to the Asemic writing, all of those pieces of newsprint that I had, and I'm just gonna use up the paint and I'm just gonna like roll, the brayer with the paint on some of these, you know, to kind of continue this ab the painterly abstraction. And what's going to happen is when these dry, I'm going to be able to use these, you know, painted papers with my secret writing on them and in new collages, right? So I'm making collage material. I can change the color of the plate paint, right, by adding another color. Do you want to add another color? Oh, you want to go ahead? You could. I have more brayers. Let me grab Naraya a brayer for a second, and you guys just keep on brayering. But this could go on for a long time, right? Now, if you are a baker, if you're a baker, is anybody out there a baker? What does this remind you of? A rolling pin, right? So it yeah. speaks a lot to like um, baking or different types of sort of um, domestic yeah. domestic practices, right? Oh, look at so the red looks nice in there. Good choice, Naraya. Look, Naraya picked the that? red. So that's adding like a nice splash of color here over the Asemic writing, right? And actually I like the red so much. I'm gonna go back to my collage. So this is some of the things that I love about the brayer is look at the textures that it gives you. It just is nothing, there's nothing like it. I just think that it's so tactile and interesting. I also kind of like it because I can't really control it. So I think it's fun because I just kind of do it and I don't really know what's gonna happen. Does that make sense? Like I'm sort of yeah. like tossing it up in the into the wind, which I think, we have to have that type of whimsy and flexibility in life because we never know what's going to happen to us, right? We never know what's going to come through that front door that we're going to have to deal with at home. We never know what mood someone's going to be in. You know, we never know if someone's going to get sick, right? Or lose their job, right? So these are sort of some of the basic feelings that we all, you know, have to deal with these uncertainties. So I kind of like it in the art too, where I don't have to feel like I'm totally in control, right? I'm kind of like letting loose a little bit and playing, right? So, and again, I love the idea of sort of like having intention, but then also, you know, completely letting go, so to speak, right? Okay, so I have a couple more um, pieces of newsprint. If you wanted to actually even work on um, the newsprint without any letters on it, that's totally fine. And if you were working in a light colored palette, if you wanna go ahead and switch to a darker palette, you can do that. Um, I tend to like to stay in the warmer, lighter colors for this type of work. Um, do you have a pink? I'm gonna make a pink, oh, thanks. And you can just continue dropping drops onto this and using the brayer. The nice thing too about the craft paint and the newsprint is that they dry quickly. So, and you know, you keep hopefully in a lot of room. Like we're, Naraya and I are lucky because we are here and we have tons of tables. We have lots of room, right? We can keep spreading out. And look, we have two plates too, so we can share. All right. So I like the paper not on the pad though. Definitely like it flat. On my way. Okay. 
Oh, this one looks kind of fun. I definitely like the pink and the black. Looks kind of cool. Great. Yeah. Let's see. And I can put a darker color on here. Let me just try a darker color. Uh, I'm going to try a darker color. What color? Oh, I could actually try like black. Let's see. I'm going to try a little black on here. Actually, and I don't even know if this is black, but it might be like, oh, this is actually a really pretty color. It's kind of like a mauve like purple violet. It's almost like a violet color. You gonna say hi, Kai? Oh, look at that, that's kind of cool. That's a darker palette, right? That's a much darker palette. All right, so I think Ryan and I just finished all of our stomach writing um, samples, but we had some really pretty colors ha happen. And you're careful where you're walking. And I'm gonna try a couple other things. Now, just to give you sort of a heads up, um, one of the fun things about briaring that we're going to kind of work on next week and we're going to talk about next week when we use the jelly plate is also maybe some um, things from around the house that make texture. So, or some other things that could go into your collages. And this is really funny, don't laugh at me, but I thought it might be cool um, to use some coffee filters, right? Because I've been a huge coffee drinker my whole life. So what happens if you write on a coffee filter, right? What if you tear one up? What if you draw on it, right? And then what if you brayer it too? Or what if you just even, I don't know, just mark and like <laughs> mark making. I have a question for you. Yes. Um, I was told by an art teacher that putting acrylic down the drain or clog it up as it turns into plastic Wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I didn't hear you. Wait, I'm gonna pin you. I didn't hear your question. Hold on. Is that Sue Ann? Yes. All right, wait. Hold I was on. Still... Go ahead, ask your question. I was told they can't put acrylic like to wash off things in the sink because the water will go into the drain and it turns into plastic. Oh really? <laughs> I've never heard that. Where I don't know where you heard that. Well, I think that that's water soluble. So, but you know what I do when I use acrylics? I use all paper plates. I, I just throw it in the trash. You know what? I just use the styrofoam and I never wash it or throw it away. I wash the brayer, you guys, with soap and water. But I think, you, I think if you dilute it enough, I don't think you're going to have a problem. Ooh, those are yeah, it's water soluble. It shouldn't do, it shouldn't yeah. clog. And the okay. acrylic, the acrylic is a very, I, I mean, this, oh, this craft paint is, it is acrylic, but it's, it's not super dense. And I think because it's lightweight too, it just, it dissolves very easily. That's why I love it. And again, it's not, it's not super expensive paint. Oh, I love it. it was All right. Yeah. With my crayon sticks. I just went over you guys like the bread. How do you guys, do you guys like painting with the brayer? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's cool. I like it. We did it with the ink in the in the other art class we did. It was really fun. Oh yeah, we're gonna do the walnut ink soon. We're gonna do the walnut ink next. Uh, oh, we're gonna do the jelly plate next week, and then we're also gonna do the walnut ink, which is also really fun. But look at these. Wait, I'm a, Sue Ann. Did I answer your question? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Of course. So I'm gonna replace the pin. But look at these cute little pieces of the coffee filter. Right, and this is what I was talking about in the first weeks of class when I said, maybe you wanna use some things that you're finding around the house, right? That you want to contribute into your artwork that represent home, right? So I told you already, like, I love coffee. Coffee filters are always around my house. And so I'm gonna use them in my collages because they represent sort of things that I find around my home, okay? Other things, and this sounds really silly, but these paper towels, and there's probably about 10 brands, brands of paper towels out there in the world. Every paper towel brand has a different pattern on it. This brand, I can't remember what it is, but it has these nice little circles on it. Paper towels, even toilet paper. Some of these household items can be very, very effective in a collage, and they can represent sort of that everydayness and symbolize your home or home environment, right? 
So it's like a combo. Do you guys need something for me? Yeah. I'm teaching a class right now. What, what's going on? Oh, can I get a plate? Yeah, they're on the side of the side of the <laughs> dishwasher right there. I didn't know what you guys needed. Okay, so like here's the paper towel demo, right? So here's my um, stomach writing on a paper towel. Here's a plate right there. I don't really know what you um, And look, I could just write, like, here's my dog's name. Like, would you ever guess that that said Luna? I mean, right? You don't even know. But let's try the paper towel with the brayer because I think that could be really exciting. Oh, and Naraya, look at Naraya made. Go ahead, show you, Naraya, show, show the ladies what you made. Look, she took the coffee filter and she really painted it, right? Yeah. So she really painted it. Now, right now, this is not um, usable for the collage because it's so wet, but when it dries, it'd be great. And then she can tear it or cut it, right? And she kind of just, did you just pour it into the coffee filter and rubbed it around or you use the bread? Okay, yeah. That's awesome. All right, so I'm gonna try the brayer on the paper towel. And you know what I've noticed today that I've been in like a warm tone. That's probably just because I'm so sick of the cold. But it's interesting to see how the brayer, oh, can I use your brayer? It's interesting to see how the brayer reacts to the different materials, right? And I would seriously, I mean, no joke, if I, if I could get down the hall and get some toilet paper, I'd probably try some toilet paper. Or if you have newspaper at home that you'd like to try the brayer, that would be nice. Even little notes. Also, um, I don't know about you guys, but I'm about to get ready to do my taxes. And I have like all these funny little boxes. Like I'm not, I'm not digitized on my taxes. I'm still, I have no QuickBooks in my life. I'm still old school. So I have little bags all over my house and my desk of receipts and things that I have to keep track of so that I can get money back on my taxes, right? So maybe some shopping receipts, brown bags, Right? Look how beautiful this one is. That took me like all of two seconds. It's gorgeous. Um, and this is a paper towel, right? And the paper towel, even the back side of it could be nice. Um, maybe we'll talk about doing some tea staining too, which is also a really nice way to kind of take that element of home or home life um, and incorporate it into your collage papers. All right, I'm going to try to warm myself up and I'm going to do something in blue green just for my last little demo here. So I've got my plates. Um, Naraya's using her foam brush too. That's interesting. And again, I'm going to go through the same little one, two, three. I'm going to take this. This is actually a paint marker. So I didn't buy these for you, um, but I probably should have because I really do love paint markers. But the paint marker is basically acrylic paint in a tube. And I got them for the kids at school because I thought they might enjoy, you know, drawing with the paint rather than feeling like they always had to use a paintbrush, right? So it comes with a tip and it's basically just a tube filled with paint. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna, I'm gonna do this one, it's gonna be husband and wife, right? Because to me, my house represents my husband and I trying to have a family and own a house and be grownups, <laughs> pay our bills, <laughs> right? Husband and wife, right? Duncan and Leah. So that's, this is like a little like, we're not kids anymore, huh? This is Duncan. All right, so this is my husband and wife one, right? Husband and wife, right? Living together, kind of looks like, and honestly, like, it's funny, but I kind of see like a face or a figure. I kind of feel like, feel like I see like, do you see a figure in here? Like, don't you kind of see like a woman's body right here? Kissing. Yeah. Like, I feel like, yeah, we're kissing. We're trying to get, yeah, we're making it. All right, so I'm going to do some blue for true love. True, I'm going to do some blue. Oh, and I love, oh, I love the way the, look at how the paper towel is acting. So this paper towel is giving me all these perforated little white lines that came with the paper towel. Like, what an awesome textural like interesting material, right? I love I tried it too. I love the brayer on the paper towel, it's beautiful. <clears throat> Naraya is doing like some pattern, like some tally marks, which is nice. All right, I'm gonna add this lighter color. All right, I think we're, I think that's all I wanted to teach everybody today. Does anybody have any questions? And I'd love to see some people's work. I hope everybody loved the briar and the um, ascemic writing. I think that was pretty fun. I loved it. 
And look, yeah. I probably, I could show you. Wait, I'm going to show you. Look how much work we made. You guys see? Look at all the work we made. Right? Wow. I know. We made a lot of, I made a lot of work. And Naraya made some too. Naraya put that, she made that beautiful coffee filter. And, oh, wait, Naraya. Oh, she made this one too. Did you do another one of your writing? Okay. All right. And she's making this other really beautiful paper towel art. Right? Which she can oh, definitely cool. tear up and use in her collages at another time. You want to go? Yeah. All right, are you gonna leave? Say goodbye. Naraya's gonna leave. She's gonna go get ready to go home from school. Yeah. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. bye. I'm, I'm in the middle of something until 3 30. Can you come back later? What? Yeah. Put it in the bin, right? Yeah. It's not in there? Oh, I don't know. Where to... Okay. Sorry. Does anybody wanna share one or have anything that they'd like to? Let's see some some work. What was your favorite color? I feel that like was... oh, ooh, that one's beautiful. Okay, wait, Miss Cyan's um Miss Cyan's gonna go first. Hold on. Ooh, that's really, really nice. I like the yellow. Oh, I, I love like the yellow. That. Ooh, that's beautiful. Oh my god, I love it. I love that those splashes. That's why I like the brayer so much is that it makes the colors so like breezy. It always makes me feel like breezy. Like everything's nice and soft and pretty. Mariah, would you mind washing these for me? Would you mind washing these for me? Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, anybody else want to share? Amina. Oh, here you go, Miss Lynette. Hang on, Miss Lynette's gonna share. Oh, pretty. Wow. Beautiful, Beautiful. I love red flower. Oh, oh, I love that. Thank you. That is gorgeous. Really nice. Okay. Oh, beautiful. I love, I'm telling you, these craft paint colors are so pretty. I'm addicted to them. I love Americana craft paint. I'm going to be their new poster girl. I have a paper. <laughs> They are nice to work with, aren't they? Aren't they nice to work yeah. with? You know what? I started working with them um, last year when I started really focusing on jelly plate printing. And I just thought like the little, the bottles and just like squirting out a couple drops and using it with the brayer and you know, adding color everywhere. I just thought it was so nice. Um, Hamina, do you want to share? Yeah, I can go. Um, oh, go ahead. Wait, hang on. Let me put you on here. And um, Hamina, I'd love for you to do some research. I'm going to give you an assignment right now. I'm okay. Some research on ascemic writing. Okay. And I can more, do that. And so maybe next week we can show some more artwork with ascemic writing because it's one of my favorite things. Sounds good. Okay. And I've spelled it on the chat. Do you see it? It's A-F-E-M-I-C. Um, yeah, I see. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so um, for the writing, this is what I did. Oh, beautiful. Oh, you did it in all those pastel colors. Yeah, and so, and I, for the painting, uh, I mixed um, light pink and light blue, so it gave me this, like, nice purple. Oh, good. I love it. So oh, I wanted to go for something colorful, so that's that's what I did. I know, right? Especially on a nice rainy day like today, you really need some color in your life. <laughs> I know, I hear you. That's awesome. I feel like that's what I was doing too. Like I'm dying for the sunshine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like yellow, orange, and they also make it pretty warm, right? Very pretty. Okay, great. Um, Miss Betty, can you do you have something to share, or did you just enjoy watching us today? You're good. You enjoyed watch. Oh wait, you got something. Bring it over. I see you. Yes. Oh, oh love that. Yes. Oh, good. You added the paint to the collage. All right. That's super. Yes. Yeah. Really, really nice. Awesome. All right. So I'm going to give you guys some suggestions and some homework. Are you ready? Okay. So for homework, remember everybody has more, more of these boards, right? So you could start another collage um with some materials that you maybe made today right you could also when these dry 
you could cut some shapes out just organically, whatever comes to mind from the ASEMIC writing that we did today. And you can add another layer right to the collages. So, Wait, right now. So right now, this is my collage, right? So, and now it's pretty much dry. I brayered it this morning. Wait, hang on. Bye, Naraya. Thank you so much for doing that with me today. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Okay. Okay, Naraya just left. She's going home. Kai, close my door, please. Close my door. So, I haven't really committed to um, the orientation of this piece yet. So, you know, I can still kind of, I still have the flexibility to go um, vertical this way or vertical this way. I could also go horizontal. I still haven't decided, which I think is fine. Um, but I think I'm gonna add some more elements to it when my aesthetic writing and prayer um, pieces dry. Um, so these are some of those pieces and I might gonna, I might cut them up, right? And add them to another collage. So if everybody could make another collage this week um, with some of the work we made today, that would be wonderful. And then next week we're gonna start, we're gonna start um, using the jelly plate. Okay, so next week we're gonna use, we're gonna do two classes uh, at least with jelly plate, right? So we're gonna make even more um, collage materials and papers using the newsprint and the jelly plate, okay? And we might go do some more aesthetic writing. We could also maybe do um, some designs of things that you found around the house. So could be lace, could be money, could be, um, things from the kitchen, right? So anything that you're finding around the house that sort of represent your life at home, we're gonna use those in the, in the art making next week, right? Okay, so I don't have anything else today. Does anybody else have anything else they'd like to um, talk about or share? I wanna show this, I did it on a paper towel. Oh, nice, I love the paper. Aren't the paper towels? Oh, that's great. nice. Oh, right. Paper towels are awesome. Paper towels are awesome. Oh my God, that is beautiful. That And that represents like, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but every time I think about a paper towel, I think about my kitchen and I think about being in my kitchen with my husband and it brings back so many memories. And I'm always teasing him that he just like, is like a paper towel monster. Like he just, <laughs> he just like pulls them, uses, barely uses yeah, it. My husband's the same way. <laughs> Grows on trees. I'm like, yo. <laughs> Actually, it does. It no, I'm kidding. <laughs> it does grow on trees. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm so sure. Um, another fun art supply, you guys, that we probably all have at home is masking tape. So if you have some masking tape, bring it out for next week because we're definitely going to use it for next week. Um, I love the paper towels. Yeah, and if you want to try the toilet paper, I mean, that's definitely something we use at home. <laughs> the other thing that's really good is I today brought in the coffee filters, but what, what else? If you don't drink coffee, you probably drink what? Tea. Yes. Please start saving your tea bags. Oh, I have tea. tons of those. Okay. Well, don't do, I, if you, if I give you a homework assignment, I don't want anybody to throw out a tea bag. So um, that tea bag paper is beautiful for collages. I mean, we could literally just cut the bags open, drop out all the herbs and just flatten the tea bags and use that paper. It's beautiful. And again, it has the same like soft light brown color or we can hand paint them. And even structurally, like they're so intricate. They remind me of skin. Um, and they have so many references to sort of life, I think like coffee and tea. We can actually even paint with coffee and tea. And if you want, I can even do a little demo on staining, um, you know, some letters or drawings or writings in coffee or tea. You can actually stain with red wine as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, anybody else have anything they want to add for today? 
Oh, I did, I did want to mention, and I think I, I, that there's a, a, an artist who's having a show right now whose whole content of his show is about home and the ideas of making art about our same topic. So I'm going to try to go to his lecture tomorrow and I'll let you know what I find out. So it's not an unusual topic. A lot of artists make work that is about, you know, life at home. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good week. Great class. Okay. Bye. Bye. Bye.